Welcome to our lecture online. And now for something a little bit different. Notice there appears to be only one denominator, x minus 10, but then we also have 10 minus x. So what we could do is to find the lowest common denominator. We could multiply those two together, but that may not be the right way to approach it. We can make this denominator look exactly like this one by multiplying it by negative 1. But of course, if we multiply the denominator by negative 1, we must do the same to the numerator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply this denominator times a negative 1. Of course, we have to multiply the numerator by negative 1 as well. Let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, here we end up with 3x plus 25 over x minus 10. That, of course, hasn't changed, but on the right side, Notice we carry the negative 1 becomes a minus 5 times 5 minus x. Or, eh, what I could have done, maybe in retrospect, I can apply the negative 1 here and switch those around. So write this as 5 times x minus 5. Make the negative x a plus x, and the positive 5 a negative 5. And then the denominator do the same thing, x minus 10. And notice, now I have the same denominator on both sides. So the lowest common denominator is now just going to be x minus 10, which makes it easier. Now I'm going to multiply both the left and the right side of the equation by the lowest common denominator of x minus 10. When we do that, notice there's no denominator here, so we simply multiply the two together. So multiply this and this term, so we get 3x times x minus 10 plus now here the x minus 10 cancel out, so I'm left with just a 25 equals, and again the x minus 10 cancels out, so I'm left with 5 times x minus 5. Now I do need to multiply everything through to get rid of the, uh, get rid of the parentheses, so we have 3x squared minus 30x plus 25 equals 5x minus 25. And notice I end up with a quadratic equation, so I'm going to move everything over to one side. 3x squared minus 30x plus 25 minus 5x plus 25 equals 0. And so now I'm going to collect common terms. We get 3x squared minus 30 minus 5 is minus 35x plus 25 plus 25 is plus 50 equals 0. And now I'm ready to try and solve that by factoring that quadratic equation. Let's move it over here. 3x squared minus 35x and plus 50 equals 0. Now to factor that, we may want to use the FOIL method. Now we have to be careful about the signs because the middle term is negative and this one is positive. So let's try this. Here, to get the 3, we can try 1 and 3, or 3 and 1. To get the 50, uh, we need two negative values, because uh, we can try minus 10 and minus 5, or minus 5 and minus 10. And we could try 25 and 2, but let's leave that off for now and see if this is sufficient to find the middle term. Okay, we're going to multiply these with these. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, 3 times negative 10 is negative 30, add them together, negative 35, and wow, look at that. I got the middle term right off the first try. That was actually not set up. That's just purely by accident. I was lucky with the numbers, but notice that if I multiply 1 times negative 5 and 3 times negative 10, I get the right middle term, which means that this can be factored as follows. I get 1 times x minus 10 and 3 times x minus 5. Now let's solve that for, the way to solve that of course now is to see that we have two binomials multiplied together giving us 0 which means that x minus 10 equals 0 or 3x minus 5 equals 0 which means that either, either x equals 10 or 3x equals minus 5, which means that x is equal to minus 5 over 3. So these are the two possible solutions. Now we need to verify that none of these 
violate our rules. In other words, since we have the denominator of x minus 10, we know that x cannot equal 10 because that will make our denominator 0, which happens to be one of our possible solutions. So this is not a valid solution because it violates the rule of not being allowed to have a 0 denominator, which means that this is the only solution that we can accept, and that is how it's done.